right. According to my computer, this is streaming live on Facebook. So welcome, welcome to the first ever Coffee Talk Live, where it's not just me talking out into the universe, into the vast open space of Facebook. I have so much cool stuff to say, but this time it's not just me. And that first thing is I have uh, the pleasure of introducing you to our very first uh, team member of the Strong as a Mother uh, coaching team. Erica Scholes is joining me today. She is so cool for so many reasons. We're going to go into it right now. And uh, one of those uh, really awesome things is that she is a doula which is something I had no idea what it was when I moved to New York. So we can touch on that real quick, but more awesomely, she is a certified holistic nutritionist. So today we're gonna talk about what that even means, uh, where she came from, and what that also means for the Strong as a Mother group. So good morning, Erica. Thanks good for morning. Thanks for having me. It's such a, such a pleasure to be here. It is so cool because you live around the corner from yep. my apartment. I borrowed cooking ingredients. <laughs> Let's talk about this for a second. Wait, before we get into that, what are you drinking today? This is um, I have, so I should have like made a fancier cup of coffee this morning, but we have one of my like go-tos a, a year or a couple of years ago before I met my husband and kind of started exploring more fancy brands of coffee um I really love Maxwell House or no not Maxwell House Folgers French Roast so I have Folgers French Roast today we normally you see my coffee set up behind me but um normally we brew our big carafe but our our filter broke so it had like a a snag in it or something so I I have a new one coming but we've been using the single brew side of our machine for the last like two days. So I'm trying to finish up my Folgers French roast. My husband is drinking a coffee that uh, his sister bought us for Christmas. And uh, it's a veteran based brand. It's veteran owned. My sister is um, in the Air Force. So it was kind of close to home and just really sweet to know that there are veteran brand coffees I think it's called like black rifle or something like that but ah, yeah awesome so, we'll put that uh, link in the uh in the comments because yeah, like yeah, I love sharing sure. good coffee I've got uh La Colombe mm. which is one of my favorites uh, before we moved to New York uh we fell in love like we I was <laughs> I've been in love with coffee culture for like what feels like an eternity but we fell in love with uh the show called Dangerous Grounds on oh I've never heard of it I forget what it is, but so Todd Carmichael is the creator of uh, La Colombe Coffee, and he's like the Indiana Jones of coffee mm. uh, sourcing. So he goes, uh, there's a whole like eight series or something, epi uh, eight episode series on, I think it's on Amazon Prime now, but uh, him and his cameraman go to these backcountry parts of the world with machetes and like cartels and stuff and, and it's like exciting and dangerous but he's his goal is to source like the best coffee in the world from the smallest like most unheard of locations anyways we fell in love with that and then you know we moved to New York City and then like every block in Manhattan now has a La Colombe so we were just like ecstatic but we can move we can move a little bit beyond coffee now but cheers let's get let's get cheers talking. cheers um, yeah, so, you know, I can just tell a little bit about my background. Um, I, I've always kind of been fascinated with, with women's health. And my mom was a ultrasound technician when I was growing up. So she used to come home and kind of tell us around the dinner table at dinner, you know, what her day was and how many babies she got to see on the screen and things like that. And I just always was fascinated by it. Um, and that actually led me to working at a women's health facility in high school. I actually got an internship there. Um, my high school was, I guess, more progressive than others. And like seniors were allowed to do kind of out of school, um, hands-on experience type things. So that was really cool. And then I went to the University of Maryland in College Park for my undergraduate degree. I have a bachelor's of science in behavioral and community health. So that 
in you know other senses a degree in public health so um, I was working with the Department of Parks and Recreation as a health and wellness specialist for a while, planning and coordinating all these different programs. And then I moved to New York. So I kind of needed to hit the restart button on life. And uh, my sister and my brother-in-law lived in Brooklyn at the time. So I came up, lived with them for a while, and just realized that I wanted to be a doula. I wanted to provide continuous care to families through pregnancy, through labor and birth, and then through postpartum as well. Um, and I'm also a childbirth educator. And then I kind of, you know, in the last year or so became even more interested in nutrition. And I was thinking, okay, like I can, I can learn more about nutrition, be able to help my clients, but I would also be able to kind of branch out and help a lot of other people who just need some assistance or, you know, have risk factors or, um, you know, diabetes, heart disease, things that we can modify diet to really help to rectify. So uh, I more recently became a holistic nutritionist and I've implemented a lot of changes in my own lifestyle and my diet. And I think that's kind of where it has to start. You kind of have to practice what you preach and believe in what you, what you're saying. Um, and just really being aware of food choices and not saying no to everything because you like it, but modifying so you can still incorporate those things, but overall have a healthy lifestyle. That's awesome. And I, and I think that like, you know, speaking, at, talking as a nutritionist with a framed picture of donuts behind you <laughs> really like makes me feel more relaxed because if you had just like a picture of broccoli behind you, I, I'd be like, what is this girl going to try to do? <laughs> donuts it? have a special place in my heart. Uh, my husband and I really enjoy donuts and I enjoy a lot of different sweets. But um, one of the, probably one of the first things we did in our relationship was like go to Peter Pan Donuts in uh, Greenpoint. I don't know if you've ever been there, but it's no. my favorite donut shop. Um, I was going to ask you like in the whole city. Oh, Peter Pan, City hands of down. Peter Pan, hands down, so good. I'll have to go at some point when you're when you're back in in this area and uh, drop some off to you. Um, can we? Yeah, can we talk there, for a minute? Yeah, about, about dropping stuff off because <laughs> nobody knows how we know each other, and I had to double check when we had our last conversation because let let me rewind for a second. Okay, everybody, let's go back eight months. Yeah. Beginning of the pandemic when everyone is baking. <laughs> when everybody decided that like baking was their, their coping mechanism. And there was the great yeast shortage of 2020. <laughs> yeah. I feel and, like it was, it was probably March or April. Probably. Yeah. So I'm, I'm sitting here. I used to own a baking business when I, you know, lived in Pittsburgh and biscotti was my thing, but I also make pizza like one to two times a week. It's, it's one of my favorite things. But uh, I was sitting here watching all these moms posting about, does anybody have yeast? And I'm like, of all the things to ask for and, and to like feel that there's like a scarcity of like toilet paper. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I get it. Water. Yeah. Yeast. And then I opened my fridge and I'm like, I have like a quart of dry active <sighs> yeast in my refrigerator and I never and couldn't find it, it anywhere. It was gone everywhere. Flour was basically like wiped out too. But so I posted <laughs> something I never thought I'd post in a mom group before, but I have yeast. <laughs> and I just said like, moms, you're baking. I got yeast. I will baggy up some and a couple teaspoons or whatever you need and leave it on my front porch in this little bowl. Like no questions asked. Like if you want it, message me. And I got like 20 people messaging me like oh my god Connie can I please have some and I'm like sure yeah your son you know this is my address come get it and you were one of the recipients yep yep and you allowed it so that we could make I think we made soft pretzels and pizza dough and now it's like I don't really do the soft pretzels but we make pizza dough in my house probably well one batch will last us for two meals but we probably make it every three or four weeks it's so easy. And we have right? pizza twice, twice a month, I think, or homemade pizza. It's so easy. And yeah, I, I think a lot of people were exploring baking. I mean, as I was 
you know, um, but it's just like, how can we kind of hone a craft? And at the same time, everybody had the same idea and you couldn't find anything anywhere. So yeah, I, I came around the corner and, you know, went up your stairs and found these really cute little like bags with leaves on them or something, cute little bags of, of yeast. And uh, yeah, thank you. you. You allowed it so we could bake and have projects. <laughs> You're you're welcome. But in then, the early COVID days. So then it you paid it forward, uh, or you returned the favor as uh, fast forward to Thanksgiving. <laughs> and I was having like the most weird assortment of Thanksgiving, you know, things for dinner. But the one thing that I love, which I learned later in life that I love, is sweet potato casserole just completely piled with marshmallows. And of course, the one time I go to the grocery store, there's no freaking marshmallows. Of, <laughs> again, of all the things to be out of. Uh, and you saw my, you saw my post or, or we connected yeah. again and you're like, I'm going to Trader Joe's. Like if we got them, like, do you want some? And I'm like, yeah, I do. Our, our neighborhood group, not just in relation to, you know, moms and, and, you know, talking about parenting and connecting in that capacity, but our neighborhood group is so supportive and, you know, the amount of things that get kind of passed along and just people that are looking out for one another. I mean, you were telling me about your neighbor the other day, how they're, you know, looking after your house when you're not there and just, you know, I don't know any of the, the neighbor. Well, I know one person in my building. I don't know her name though, but, uh, you know, I live in a, an apartment building with a lot of different apartments and I don't have that sense of community in my building, but I know you're down the street. I have a couple of other, you know, really good Astoria-based friends. Um, but it's just so nice to know you can post and usually you get, you know, good responses and help with what you need or just that community is so nice to have. It is. So this girl throws a bag of marshmallows on my front porch and runs away. <laughs> <laughs> and I and walked then, it up. <laughs> I didn't see it happen. So in my head, you just like pulled up to the sidewalk, yeah, lost it, it over out. and ran away like, <laughs> like a grenade. <laughs> and then I, I had that bag and rescued your Thanksgiving. You did. And you, I, you know, I grabbed it and I came back in cause I had like zoom phone calls all day in my bedroom and the, and the bag of marshmallows was in my bedroom for like a whole day, which made my whole <gasps> bedroom smell incredible. By the way, if you like don't have a candle and you want something to like make your room smell nice, marshmallows, having said. <sighs> Anyways, that's, I mean, this, this is kind of like our origin story, like how you and I met and, yeah. and you were asking, you'd asked here and there about like my business forming and, and stuff that was going on and found out you were going with the nutritionist. So let's kind of go back to that. There's a lot of different definitions of nutritionist, dietitian. Yeah all that kind of stuff. So why did you lean towards holistic nutrition? What does that mean? Uh, and what do you love about it? Yeah, I am a very kind of natural type of person in my everyday life. I, my husband says things and I'm like, yeah, I know I'm getting crunchier as I'm getting older, but I am all about, you know, healthy options. Oh, sorry. Um, uh, keeping things as kind of natural as possible, you know, whether it's skincare products, foods, um, laundry detergent, I like to be more natural just because the more chemicals we have in things, the more kind of side effects we have, or, you know, it, it could play out in different ways. But I chose the holistic nutrition path because it resonated the most with me and what I felt like I could offer as a nutritionist. You know, holistic nutrition differs from typical nutrition because its its focus is different. We're focusing on how how we can use more whole foods, so you know, unprocessed foods straight from the ground. You know, not modified very much. Um, how we can use the whole foods and spices to you know prevent disease in our body or to heal disease to create a healthier lifestyle you know, our, our society is riddled with risk factors or diseases, high blood pressure, um, heart disease, diabetes. These are all things that can be adjusted with a healthier lifestyle and a healthier diet. Um, 
you know, that's the broad sense of holistic nutrition. In my coaching, coaching, I focus more on mindful eating just in general, kind of making good food choices for your body and for your health. And ideally, if you are feeling good about your food choices, if you are fueling your body with good foods, you're feeling better in all aspects of your life. So it's, it's about kind of making simple swaps or, or making modifications to the foods that you like, the recipes that you like to make them a little bit healthier, but also making sure that it's maintainable. So, you know, we don't want to completely uproot how you're eating and completely say, you know, no, you can't eat any of the things that you like to eat that you've been, you know, making every week and feeding your family. No, we want to make some small adjustments to make that recipe for, you know, spaghetti and meatballs a little healthier, you know, simple things that can go a long way. Yeah, that, that sounds like it's totally in alignment with uh, the way I do my coaching right now. And you, you reminded me of this post that came, that came back up on my feed. It was something I wrote about uh, three years ago, but then I wrote an update about it because I said, like, dear everyone, please stop replacing carbs with cauliflower yes. because it's just the <laughs> worst and it won't ever be the same. And, and I feel like you're just being mean to yourself when you say I, like, oh, I'm going to eat a pizza, but it has to be cauliflower. Right. I'm not going to lie. We've tried, you know, cauliflower rice. We've tried the cauliflower pizza crust. It sucks. I mean, maybe some people really like it, but I think that my whole wheat flour based pizza dough that has, you know, herbs and spices in it is just as good health wise as a cauliflower pizza crust that tastes like cardboard and you don't even want to eat it you got to fill it with like a lot of other stuff to even make it like, yeah. And still it's difficult to eat emotionally, physically, spiritually, (laughs) but yeah. So yeah, that's, that's my point. I mean, eating, so maybe you end up eating like the cauliflower crust might be an equal amount of calories. So if in your mind you're saying it's a healthy thing, it's cauliflower, but you're still eating like 800 to a thousand calories of food you might as well have just went down the street and got a slice. Yep. You know? And and I think that's where that's where you and I vibe really well because we kind of get it. I think exactly. That, it's not it? just the words, you know, that cauliflower crust kind of that that buzzword, you know, healthy. You know, we a lot of different things, gluten free, vegan, you know, we we assume that those things are healthy, but they're not always the healthiest option. So it's kind of it's kind of like working through and seeing, okay, is this actually a healthier option? Um, yeah. And it, it isn't always the best choice. I feel bad that I rag so hard on cauliflower, but I also, I love cauliflower, roasted cauliflower. I do, you know, some curries with cauliflower, but (laughs) cauliflower crust, cauliflower rice, no thanks. Yeah. Oh, my, my neighbor knows the one that's checking in on my house. She knows my disdain disdain for cauliflower and she's determined to find something that that I'll eat like that I'll eat it and she found um a adobo sauce roasted oh. like slab of cauliflower that was like a cauliflower steak kind of, yeah yeah and you know it it wasn't awful but in that in that so you don't like it at all it's not that I didn't like it at that point. It was mostly just like a vessel to eat the flavor of the adobo sauce, Okay, you know? So I don't, again, I don't hate it, but am I going to like replace a uh, chicken breast with a cauliflower steak? Good Lord. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have some good cauliflower recipes. So maybe next time I make some, if you're home, I'll drop a little off and you can try it. That's what I, that's the other thing I love about the neighborhood, just food swaps. But yep. I mean, with COVID, I mean, everything's been turned upside down with yeah. sharing and questionable foods and, and things. And uh, I think, you know, you kind of touched on it, but like our, our belief that just because it's in the health food section or just because it's in the organic section uh, makes it good for us to eat instead. And, and that's a big myth or yeah. at least misconception because there's no, there's no one at that company. There's no regulation in the, in the USDA in the health department saying like, you can't write these things. So there's such a, a big liberty of what you're allowed to put on a loaf of bread 
to make people want to buy it. And, and that kind of education is, is one of the reasons I, I wanted to bring somebody on too on, onto the team is to start empowering moms and women with the knowledge that, you know, if they want to start incorporating healthier foods for their kids and swapping out or, or just developing or relearning what healthy means to them to feel like empowered and not that they need a nutritionist to know that they're, you know, eating healthy foods, but to, to kind of have that education uh, so that they can, they can do it on their own. I feel like my, um, there's, there's a, there's an app, there's a dating app called Hinge. I think. Yeah, I've heard of it. It's, they have <laughs> the best I may have been on it for a short period of time. <laughs> oh my God. I, the only, the only app, dating app that was out when I was dating my husband was like, it was maybe match.com, but in that's how my husband and I met. Ah, yeah. <laughs> wait, this is not sponsored by match. We're not going to talk about it. Anyways, <laughs> hinge hinges. Um, they have the best ad campaign. They're the app that's meant to be deleted. Oh yeah. I've heard that. And it's brilliant and I love it. And that's, that's exactly what, uh, my coaching programs are, are like, so I can't steal their, I can't yeah. steal their ads. But the point is like, my goal is that when clients work with me or now work with us is that they don't need us. They'll get to a point where they don't need someone to tell them what workouts to do, what, what nutrition is, is good for them, that the, it's not just a personal training session, but it's empowerment and education and learning what it's yeah. like to kind of navigate motherhood and navigate a healthy journey, um, you know, post COVID, post having kids, post whatever your life looks like now, so yeah. that you can go off in the world as a functional adult. <laughs> yeah. And it's different for everyone, you know, you know, um, some people might just need a little bit of guidance as to what kind of foods are good to swap for other foods. Other people might need more of the, uh, kind of, uh, I'm losing my words right now, really, you know, diving into what, what do these different types of food do for our bodies and how can we make modifications in that? You know, we have different types of food, you know, proteins, carbohydrates, fats, and, and breaking that down and understanding how it all works really helps to, you know, make better food choices. And some people are going to need a little bit more guidance than others. And that's okay. Everyone's different in their needs and, and in their goals. And it's all about listening and uh, tailoring to those specific needs. And a lot of trial and error. Yes. If something so doesn't work, it's okay. Let's just try to modify it and, or try something else completely and see if it's more sustainable. I think that's the biggest thing, especially surrounding parenthood and, um, you know, working, working parents too. You have a lot of different things to navigate. So how can we make easy changes and make sure that that sticks versus making your life even more complicated at home? Yes, easy changes. And that all, that all or nothing mentality is like, I want to leave that in 2020 and in the past and kind of just never, never have that feeling ever again. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, if, if there's one thing that like being in quarantine, being in COVID taught us is that we have to adapt and we can't just quit. We can't just bail because we need to function. Our babies need us to function. We have a job to do. We have relationships to maintain. And, uh, you know, one thing that's really hard with, uh, you know, particular like cleanse programs or strict diet programs or food elimination group uh, diet programs is that the second you stop doing that program, it's, you lose all the work that you did, yeah. right? Like if, if you do, um, you know, whole, whole 30, for example, and you have this very expensive and <laughs> very specific list of foods that you can eat for 30 days. Yeah. You might've lost a little bit of weight. Maybe it was fat. Maybe it was water weight, mm -hmm. but when you come back at it and you eat, a bagel, a slice of pizza, literally like the carbs that this city is run on <laughs> anywhere, then it, you, you gain it back. Your body's like, oh, the, the carbohydrate, that's what I love. I'm, that's what I'm going to use now. And then you just, you, you never develop the habits or the practices to eat healthy. You just kind of put a bandaid on the problem. 
Exactly. And there are certain instances where, you know, food elimination diets, things like that are very helpful, but it's very specific to the person's needs. If there are allergies, if there are underlying health conditions that really need to be addressed, those things are, are really important. But for the average person, making simple modifications, being more mindful of how you're shopping in the grocery store, you know, shopping along the perimeter, using the, you know, sticking to the aisles that have the fresh produce, the, you know, um, fresh meats, things like that, and only going into those middle aisles for certain things, uh, because we tend to have those more processed foods in the middle. Um, you know, being more mindful is what most people need and just making those small changes. Um, yeah, it's, we just want to all be healthier. We want to, we want to show our kids how to be healthy, how to have healthy relationships with food. I mean, I think that's a huge part of it too. I mean, I, I think about, you know, some of my family members, like my, my grandma, uh, she and her partner, they'll go out to breakfast and they'll share a stack of pancakes. They'll share a cup of coffee. And it's not because they're being cheap. It's because they are watching, especially her partner, he watches every single calorie that goes into his mouth. I'll, I'll visit. I mean, pre-COVID days, I would visit and I would be, you know, eating something like a pretzel or, you know, something that was more like empty calories because it tastes good. And, you know, I want that every once in a while. And, you know, he said to me, you know how many calories that has? And my response is, I don't care. Like, that's, that's not my main goal here. You know, it tastes good. I want it. I'm not going to eat the whole bag, but I like, I eat healthy pretty much all of, you know, the rest of the time. So I'm allowed and I shouldn't feel guilty about eating the piece of cake, eating the, uh, I don't know. I'm trying to think what we have in our, in our house. We don't care. We don't usually have a lot of, um, junky type foods, but I made a ton of Christmas cookies this year, which we just finished like three days ago because we had a bunch in the, in the freezer. I don't feel guilty about having my cookie in the evening or having my piece of chocolate. Those are like my sanity elements. I need those to be a functioning person and I'm not going to feel bad about that. That's as you shouldn't. And you touched on kind of two important points. So the first one, the most recently, like this older guy, that's your, uh, you know, they're bringing these generational behaviors and beliefs yeah. to food uh, to the younger generations. And, and that's what we're dealing with now as parents or just even as adults, you know, whether you have kids or not, you have the behaviors and beliefs that, you know, the media taught you the, the commercials that you watched and what your parents believed about food. So what, however it affected you, that's the stuff you're carrying with you. And, and it's important that we recognize what is true, what we believe is true and versus what is, what is fact and what's science-based. And that's one of the things that takes time to really peel back the layers of why do I have this belief towards this food item? And one of the dangerous things that I, that I see all the time, and, and one of the big purposes, one of the main purposes I have this group is that some mom goes into some, you know, any kind of group or, you know, anybody goes into a group and says like, oh, I need to lose 10 pounds. Like, what, what do you guys do? And like, what should I do? And, and they get all of these responses and it, it's so frustrating to see because I think, you know, you're, you're reaching for help and I understand that and you feel like you're in a safe place to ask for that help. But when you get so many varying responses, I did intermittent fasting, I did 21 day cleanse, I did Whole30, I, I do paleo, I do Weight Watchers, buy my supplements. <laughs> then, then you just get overwhelmed, but you also don't understand why it worked for them. And they also don't always say if it lasted. Yeah. Like, yeah, and you did 21 day cleanse. Yeah. Maybe it worked. You lost 10 pounds. Did you keep the habits? Yeah. And different things work for different people. You know, the, the workout routine or the, the eating pattern that you have might not be the same exact fit for me. And we oh, can say that, <laughs> we can say that for most aspects of our lives, right? You know, as a doula, uh, I see that a lot of 
families postpartum are especially surrounding feeding are saying that, oh, this person told me to do this, this person told me to do this, and it's like conflicting information. And I have to kind of backtrack it and I say, well, this person's telling you this because it's worked for someone. And this person's telling you this because it's worked for somebody else. But we have to take all of that information and modify it to what's going to work for us. And like you were saying earlier, it takes trial and error. It takes, you know, figuring out a few different ways that we could do things and what works best. And that might change, you know it might work for a few weeks and then you have to make a few modifications so that it's continuing to work. I mean, in, in fitness and weight loss, and this is of course not my area of expertise, but you, a lot of people do some kind of a diet or regimen where maybe they're losing weight pretty steadily, but then they hit a plateau. And that's usually where you have to reevaluate and make changes. And it goes back to just understanding how it all works and what our body needs to, to figure it out. Exactly. And that's, that's the main point. And that's the main purpose of the strong as a mother coaching group, like the free group here that we're talking in now, because I don't allow MLM items to be sold here. Everything that we talk about, everything that I post is backed by science and evidence-based practices and I want that to, I want this to be kind of the, uh, the resource and the area where moms can come in and ask questions. Or if I do post something, it's not because my ulterior motive is for them to buy my powder or try these pills or something. Um, but, you know, even let's take that a step further and, and understand that, like, I'm a health and fitness coach, you're a nutrition coach. So what is, you know, going on with the strong as a mother uh, coaching program is my moms are developing healthy science and evidence-based nutrition practices and exercise practices. We're finding out what works and doing more of it. And we're finding out what points they get to where they normally would stop and bail on themselves and quit or go and stick their head in a bag of Kit Kat bars, not speaking from experience. And, and, we, do, and we work on, on it together and say like, okay, this is where you'd normally quit let's talk, let's talk about it. Let's see what's going on. Let's see why you feel like you're at a red light here, or you've gone off the rails or off track or these things that we always tell ourselves. Uh, and we move past those barriers. Yeah. Because, it's like hitting the reset button. But with more experience, right? Because yep. there's in, you know, in coaching with this, there's no such thing as failure as long as we can learn from what we did. So our progress isn't going to be linear, right? Our, you know, a journey goes like this and it takes time. Otherwise, the Lord of the Rings would be a really boring movie. If Frodo's like, all right, I'm going to go return the ring to Mordor. Let me go take a walk. Oh, there's the door. There's the lava. The end. The end. I'm not comparing like everyone's health and weight loss journey to Lord of the Rings, but just saying that like there's trial and error. There's, there's progress. There's setbacks. It's whether you have the accountability and support to help move forward past those and kind of break those cycles of you know, eating bad things and, and diets and trying again and feeling like a failure. Anyways, so the last question that I like to ask and want to ask all of my interviewees and Cosby Talk is during quarantine, was there something that you felt was your best purchase, the best thing that you either impulse bought or the best thing that you bought for self-care that you're still using? What is your best COVID quarantine purchase? Well, we bought a car, which we never thought we would buy in the city. Um, we had my sister's car for probably about six weeks. She was, she gave birth in May. So, you know, as I wasn't her doula, but I was going to watch my older niece. So we had her car so I could easily get back and forth. And once we kind of relinquished that, we were like, oh, how are we ever going to, you know, see them? How are we going to be there? Because we haven't ridden the subway since March of 2020. And, and you know, taking a car doesn't, like a, a Lyft or an Uber isn't the most, you know, settling thing. So we bought a car and it's had its rough moments. We realized that it uh, needed a lot of work, like inside, like 
pulling back the carpets were covered in mold. It was, it was horrible. It was a very stressful experience, but it's all good now. Um, so I would say that would be probably the biggest purchase. And it's been really great just because my sister and her family are included in our little COVID bubble. So it's been really nice to go back and forth to see them. Um, but we've also done a few little home projects and we rent our apartment. So of course we don't want to put too much money into something that is not ours, but it's also kind of nice to feel a little bit better about your space. So our kitchen floor and our bathroom floor, the grout, you know, it's, it's a New York city apartment. This building I think was built in like the 1930s or something. So it's, it's seen better days. And as, as hard as you clean it, as much as you scrub it, it just still looks like crap. So we bought these like route pens and grout paint. And I was literally like coloring in all of the grout lines in our, in our bathroom and then painting it on in our kitchen. So that's made a really big difference. Um, and we also bought this like peel and stick wallpaper. And I've always wanted to do this from the day we moved into our apartment and just didn't do it until COVID. But I created like a little backsplash in our kitchen with this peel and stick wallpaper. And it just adds color and warmth. And it just really, you know, we're spending pretty much 100% of our time in our apartment. You know, you want to make it feel a little bit nicer, a little warmer and homier. And I was able to, to do a few of those things. That's awesome. Plus, yeah. Home Depot is literally right there. So I'm yes. sure you just walked over and was like, what project am I tackling today? <laughs> It was a lot of research as to like what product would best fit our needs, but absolutely. And uh, yeah, we're very lucky to have Home Depot and a few, a few other stores and shops close by, which has been really, really great during COVID. I love it. And that's yeah. a perfect segue for me to mention uh, next week, our guest is going to be Andrea Montanelli, if I'm pronouncing her name right, from Dream Organization. So we are going to talk to her about some of the biggest mistakes people make uh, doing, trying to like go for an organization thing in January. Uh, also kind of like some tips and ideas for uh, improving the room, the shoe box, the home that you're stuck in uh, now way more than normal. So perfect segue. Erica. Yeah, that'll be exciting. Yeah, so the last uh, announcement I'll make, uh, just so you know, Mamas, the Strong as a Mother uh, coaching program is starting again on February 14th, and I will be looking for 10 moms who are wanting to take their health and their fitness as it is now from chaos to crushing it with the help of Coach Connie and Coach Erica. So if you are interested, please comment below, tell me more, and I'll give you the deets and we can start talking. Otherwise, please feel free to post nutrition questions below in the comments and Erica can follow up later and respond. Um, otherwise, thanks again, Erica, for coming on today. Uh, enjoy the rest of your coffee, your Thank beautiful you. tile floors and your <laughs> awesome wallpaper. And mamas in the group, stay strong, stay caffeinated, and have an incredible week. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Erica. Thanks. Yeah, thanks for having me. Bye. Bye. Women deserve to lead fulfilling lives, and there is no honor or glory in sacrificing your health, your happiness, and your identity in the name of work and family. I'm Connie Pastorius. I believe women are inherently strong for being able to create and nurture a human life while simultaneously working on and for themselves, and that should be celebrated. 